Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Hayden Halsey and today we're going to talk about a topic that is a big elephant in the room, uh, environmental. So this is a, environmental is a topic that seems to be uh, huge in every single transaction that we're doing these days. So the typical environmental that you hear is phase one, phase two, phase three sometimes. So what we're running into is it seems as if every single property that we're getting a phase one on comes back saying we need a phase two. Now the environmental laws were adjusted in 2017 and in 2020. So we're getting, you know, a phase one that might have been done in 2018 and now we're selling it here in 2021 or we'll close in 2022. Everything needs to be updated. Now, of course, this does depend on the property type and all the circumstances. If it's not finance, if it's a cash deal or contract for deed, some of this could be bypassed, but we're talking typical uh, real estate transactions. So with a phase one, it's usually, you know, let's call it, depending on the property size, 1,500 to 3,000, you know, if it's huge, you know, it might be 5,000. In a phase two, it could be anywhere from, you know, let's say uh, five to 25,000, depending on the size of the property. Now, the point of this video is not to give you all of those details with a phase one and phase two, that'll be forthcoming. Mark and I will probably do that video, but we wanna give at least some tips, kind of what we're seeing here as brokers, how do you navigate this? What's the best way to handle it? Because if you don't know what you're doing, this takes a deal and it just throws every wrench at it possible. It throws it all off track. And we're not talking like a, a two week delay. These can be you know six month delays or just deal killers altogether. So one of the first tips that we like to give is, seems basic, but work with a good environmental company. Work with a group that does this every single day, that knows Minnesota very well, that knows the property type well that you're working with. Now, there's a lot of environmental companies in this field because it's a lucrative business. So you might get, you know, so what we'll do usually is we'll get, let's say three quotes for a phase one. You might get one that's 1,700, one that's 1,500, one that's 2,700. Automatically, people go with the cheaper route sometimes, but you get what you pay for like most things in life. If you go with that company that's actually gonna do a good comprehensive job, you're probably gonna save yourself money later. The biggest savings comes with the phase two. Now this is where it gets really expensive fast. So if you get someone that gives you, you know, some really low pricing and they come back and they say, well, you know, that pricing was actually only for the summer vapor testing. We have to do the, the winter vapor testing and that's gonna be another $8,000. You need to make sure you know what you're reviewing. Is it truly the full scope of the work or is it only part of the picture? So you get what you pay for with the environmental company. You don't wanna go with the small, not that there's mom and pop shop environmental groups, but you get the point, because that phase one and that phase two, we want that to be acceptable for that buyer to take to their lender. If you go get some, some small town group to go do it for a really, really cheap price and you're trying to go save yourself time and money, you get a buyer on board with a purchase agreement or an LOI, you give them that phase one, their lender might look at it and say, well, that's not a group that's on our approved list. Now, was it helpful to get it? Sure, it could save some time, but then you have that buyer or that seller having to repay for that and redo that work. So make sure it's from a group that you think will be generally accepted from most lenders. One of the other pieces of advice that we like to give, and we're doing this more and more with sellers because we take a lot of product to market, is we're actually getting this environmental work going prior to even going to market or a purchase agreement. Now, it might seem a little crazy, and not every seller can afford to do this, but what we're doing is, we're saying seller, a lot of times this is your problem anyways, it's going to come up, we might as well get it going. And we're gonna to get to the end result of a closing a lot sooner. So on some of these new listings, we're getting a phase one going ASAP. You know, We haven't even signed listing docs on some of them, but we know it's moving forward. That phase one is getting going, that seller's paying for it, you know, 3,000 bucks to get it going. It then shows to the buyer, wow, the seller's moving forward in good faith, it saves them some money, you might get a better price on your purchase, and you might close a lot sooner versus getting a purchase agreement, then that phase one comes, then that phase two, and then remediation, and you know, you're, you're six months out versus trying to shortcut that a bit. So that's a good piece that we're doing right now, even on another property over on uh, University in St. Paul, we're jumping right into the phase two as well. We know that the phase one is gonna come back dirty. We didn't even have a buyer at that point. These sellers were in a spot that they could pay for it, so we just went ahead with it. It's gonna shortcut probably everything by 
60 to 90 days and now we have a buyer on board. They appreciated that we got that work started, the seller's paying for it, so it's a win-win for everyone there. So one of the other pieces of advice that we like to give is when looking at these environmental reports uh, at the conclusion section of a phase one or phase two to see what's next is recommended versus required. It's pretty basic, but there's a big difference between what is actually recommended and what's required. Now keep in mind who's making money from the environmental work. It's the environmental company and the MPCA. Now, not saying that they're you know trying to be deceptive in their practices, but if there's a recommended list of 15 items, they're going to make a lot more money than a required list of two or three items. So we always look at this and say, what truly needs to happen for this buyer and this lender to close on this property to move forward? It seems basic, but if you can get on a conference call and you can talk to these different groups and figure out what actually needs to be done, it'll save you a lot of time and money. So the final point that I'll add around the environmental space with some of these tips is when you are working with a buyer, and we, we did a video actually not long ago on, on you know why does the buyer's lender matter, you wanna make sure that you have a good lender on the other end that understands this environmental work. Do they understand the MPCA? Do they understand how this works? Because if you get a phase one or a phase two back and it's a lender that doesn't understand what is going on, they're gonna kill the deal. They're not gonna to wanna to, you know, feel comfortable moving forward because the lender is always protecting their interests. So if they don't want to risk it with a buyer defaulting and getting a property back, you could have a huge deal killer there with the environmental. So make sure that lender knows what they're doing with the environmental work. All right, thanks again for watching guys, I appreciate it. This is one of the first videos on environmental, I believe Mark has done maybe one in the past, but we're gonna have more of these. This is gonna be kind of a small series, so to speak, just because it's such a hot topic here and it really affects everyday commercial real estate. So uh, tune in, keep, uh, keep your eye out for those videos and thanks for watching.